Welcome to another episode of Band Director Bootcamp, the podcast with productivity and wellness tips for busy band directors. I'm your host, Leslie Moffat, and I'm really grateful to be sharing this platform with you. As busy band directors, we know you don't have time to watch lengthy professional development webinars, so we share 20-minute tidbits with takeaways you can use to support you in this awesome profession in a healthier way. And today I've got a guest. Her name is Leah Poole, and Leah is the band director at Corvallis High School in Oregon, and she's just finished up her 13th year of teaching. And we did some chatting beforehand, and I've talked to her before, so I, I've known her story for a while. And, and as we were talking about the tips and what are you going to bring to the table today, we finally just decided her episode's called Chill the Fuck Out. And we're going to talk about how she's going to talk about how perspective has helped, has forced her to chill out, but then what it did for her program and for her in the process. And it kind of surprised her. So before we have her go into all that detail, I just want to say, Leah, welcome. And thanks for giving up a little bit of time for us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So busy band director, um, that would be your title, but that's only one of your titles because you got a lot of hats you wear. Um, yes. And so tell us your story. I've followed your story for, for many years um, and I know it well, but I just want to have everybody else out there understand you first before we talk about the stuff you've done. Yeah. Um, well, I've, like I said, like you said, I've been teaching for 13 years and uh, I've done the job where I've woken up at 4 a.m. and taught, you know, jazz band at 6 a.m. and stayed all day until marching rehearsal was over at 8 p.m. And um, I've done the, you know, that same day and stayed until the end of football games and uh then woke up the next day at you know 4 a.m for a 4 30 a.m call time for a marching band competition so i've done that job um and uh when i came to uh chs uh seven years ago uh it was kind of my my first little dipping my toe into, oh, this is what life could be if I had a little bit more balance. Um, I, when I did that whole position that I just referenced, I did not have a family. I was not, um, I did not have a partner. I was just by myself. And when I took the job at CHS and I chose to quit my job to be with my future husband, it was for my family and my future family. Um, and so, so I guess almost two years ago, yeah, well, two years ago, my, um, my husband got cancer, um, and it was during COVID. So it was in some twisted way convenient because I was able to teach that, whole year um online while we went through the process of chemo and you know appointments and all of that stuff um and i came back the next year when 2021 school year started when we were back in school and my husband's cancer came back and um killed him right in the beginning of the school year um I just happened to be pregnant with twins when the school year started. And so that school year was quite the wash. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of here to give perspective. Uh, I had a really interesting experience actually when we were going through cancer is uh someone in my life, their house burned down and it was really terrible. And everyone was, you know, really concerned. And I thought in my head, I would love to have my house burned down. Please burn my house down and save my husband. Um, it was just the weirdest thing to think, you know, that I was jealous of someone mm. for their house burning down. Cause it's just stuff, you know, and, uh, and a job is just a job. <laughs> and, uh, it turns out that the only thing that actually matters are the people in your, in your life. Um, and so I, uh, 
didn't really work much that year. You know, when I was there, I was a bit of a shell of a person. Um, and my admin, to give them credit, gave me a lot of leeway. Just show up, do your job and go home. And we're happy. <laughs> Uh, and I realized kind of halfway through the school year that I wasn't getting any joy out of being, um, in the classroom, uh, because all of my joy making music was connected to my husband who was also a musician. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was text him, you know, or call him and tell him, you know, how great the wind ensemble sounded. Um, or how frustrating it was that, you know, this alto saxophone player halfway through the year still can't articulate on a reed instrument, you know, <laughs> either one. <Yes. laughs> and uh, so I, I took off time before I um, gave birth, and then I chose to not come back after I gave birth. So technically I could have come back in April and I chose to take the whole year off and, you know, choosing that path absolutely put my program in a concerning place. I, I really was worried about, you know, not recruiting students, um, not setting up the year like you do, you know, at the end of the year. And I didn't do any of that. I just focused on my mental health and my babies and and a toddler at the same time. And my five year old. <laughs> yeah, my four year old at that time. Yeah. And I mentioned to you, but I, I had this box of things that I could do. I could feed my babies. <laughs> I can pick them up from daycare. You know, I painted my house a little bit. I kind of just had these like things that I could do. But anything outside of my box that someone would ask of me, um, I, it just I couldn't do it. I had to have these this really strict boundary in my life. Uh, and I learned what those boundaries were when I tried to push past that box. Uh, and I would forget things or just uh, fall through on a, appointments or, you know, um, whatever else, it just would fall through. A lot of things would fall through. And so when I started the school year, um, that next year, I had to catch up on all of those things that I wasn't able to set up in the beginning of the school year. So you're going back to work after losing a husband, nursing two babies, having a four-year-old. Nothing was set up in the spring. Welcome to your school year, Leah. And this yeah. is past yeah. year, right? And, and I was so, still nursing when oh I went gosh. back to it. Okay, yeah. so I just wanted to set the scene and make sure everybody's following. And this is how she started this school year. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. Pay attention to what she says. She had 100% retention with her freshmen and lost only two kids in her program overall for the whole year. So as she talks about this and you go, oh, that wouldn't work. Everything would fall apart. Yeah. yeah, but let's put our egos aside and listen a little differently. Go ahead, Lee. I had to throw that in there because I know where you're going with this. Yeah. And so, you know, here we go. We start the beginning of the school year. My office is a complete disaster. I remember when I left in January before I gave birth to babies and my admin just looked at me and they're like, bye, <laughs> get out of here. Like, you don't need to clean. Just just like you're so pregnant. <laughs> just leave. <laughs> and so nothing was set up physically or, you know, logistically. And I will be honest that it took me until after marching season to get a calendar of events of the year out, which I have never done. And I knew in my head that I needed to, but I killed the fuck out. <laughs> and instead I had to figure out how I was going to raise twin babies as a single parent and go to four football games and do marching practice. 
that was more important. I had to figure out daycare and babysitters and transportation. And I was just in survival mode. And so once marching band got out, then I put the calendar together. Uh, And, you know, I gave myself just a ton of grace. Like this isn't the way I would like to run my program, but here we go. (laughs) <laughs> the control freak in all of us right Absolutely. most of us <laughs> yeah well freaks with yeah. big egos so we want to do it ourselves and make sure it's done right yes yes but and you, i definitely decided- have that in me <laughs> and that was another thing i absolutely did is i let the kids you know have that leadership that most kids just absolutely thrive on um and I started this really exciting committee. I, I kind of just mm, planted the seed before COVID and then brought it back this year. And I'm really excited for it to actually come to fruition this next year. Um, and so instead of having that traditional uh, leadership kind of set up where it's like band president, band vice president, band secretary, I started a committee, um, uh, yeah, committees, band committees. And so there was a committee for recruitment. So it was the kids who want to be involved with bringing the middle schoolers up to the high school and creating those relationships. I created, and the other committee was an organization committee. It was those kids who just want systems, you know, in place and like to organize music and like to file music and like to create, you know, a more efficient way of doing things. A committee for um, a social committee, which was very popular. Uh, And so those are the kids who want to put together parties or after school activities um, to just bond and not necessarily play music, just hang out and watch a movie. And uh, we had a room improvement committee where the kids are, they really believe in the the physical reflection of the band program so that when people walk into the band room it looks like okay like this is a great place to be it's organized you know it's clean and uh it was also the committee that the kids got to create decorations and uh seasons you know change and the decorations in the in the room changed and so all of these committees created a way to um delegate to all of the kids um instead of a small amount of kids right which is kind of if you think of it that goes towards who we are as band directors is you know we think that we have to control everything and run everything and there's in those leadership aspects, you know, when you have like a drum major and a a student president and everything, there's like five or six kids that are really involved and they also think that they have to run the show, you know? And so the idea with the committees is it's dispersed across however big your program is. Um, And so I was very excited to just kind of let go, you know, and, just see what happened um, with these kids just kind of taking control. Um, I let go on chamber ensemble, which is a big passion of mine. I, I would usually spend hours and hours just going through YouTube videos and state lists from other states and um, going down that YouTube rabbit hole of finding just the right perfect piece for every single ensemble that I had. Uh, And I didn't do that this year. I didn't have time. Wait, didn't you have some people go to state though? I did. Wait a minute. What? You chilled the fuck out and you still had kids succeed. Imagine that. 
I absolutely did. And they choose and they chose their own music and they picked their rehearsal time. And my saxophone trio, uh, they met over winter break at their houses, at each other's houses. And they got together quite a bit, actually, at each other's houses. And I worked with them actually very little. I only worked with them when they asked me to. Uh, and then I had a percussion group that just got together every single week on a Friday after school, playing a college level piece of music. And by the time they performed it, they had it all memorized. And it was, it was the best, um, percussion group I've ever had. And it was amazing, you know? And so here I was chilling the fuck out, like not getting the calendar out (laughs) until like the 1st of November, not doing any fundraisers at all. Um, We did two festivals um, and uh, yeah, and I ended up not losing any kid over the semester, which kind of blew my mind. Usually there's always one or two little green sheets that go, yeah. <laughs> come into my office and you're like, oh, you've already made your decision. <laughs> I didn't have any of that. Uh, and I have to give a huge amount of credit to my student teacher. Shout out to Drew Medock. He's a, he's a new new band director in the world. He's yeah, he working is. in the Silver Falls School District. Yeah, and he was just absolutely amazing. Um, but I hope that I taught him something as well of just chill the fuck out, you know? Yeah, that's, <laughs> everybody needs to hear that. Yeah. Before, before we, we go into the last little bit here, um, I just want to, put out there to our listeners have you take a minute to think about how you can put some of these practices that we talk about on these different uh, episodes into practice in your own life welcome band director boot camp listeners if you're feeling a bit burnt out and are ready for support and accountability partners in your wellness and productivity we have an amazing opportunity for you Join our 90-day virtual boot camp, a community initiative designed for busy band directors like you who love their job but seek a more sustainable approach. We'll meet weekly, discuss your wellness goals, and develop strategies to help you achieve them. We'll tackle productivity hacks and fine-tune systems for the upcoming school year. With 35 years of experience, I've got some tricks and tips up my sleeve that I can't wait to share. So as we move into a new season of our lives, if you want to feel empowered and supported by like-minded individuals, this is your chance. Reach out to me at banddirectorbootcamp.com or click on the link in our show notes to schedule a 15-minute call. Let's ensure this is the right fit for you, get you signed up, and embark on this wellness journey together. Because together, we rise. All right, we are back with Leah Poole, and I love our episode title, Chill the Fuck Out, because, you know, (laughs) she did... Did she did this uh, not by choice, but now it might be by choice. So before we wrap up your episode, I want to ask you, having lived the uptight world and and all the ways, and now chilling the fuck out, what do you do? You think you'll go to a compromised way next year? Do you think you'll keep going down this path more? What do you or back to the old? What? I think um, it was just. Uh... A matter of of balance, you know, so yeah, I think there'll be a compromise this year for sure. I was so excited in May and June to plan for the next school year. And it's just going to make my life so much easier, you know, so some things um, that I gave myself grace on a lot of it was because I couldn't do any of that front loading work before the end of the school year. I cleaned my office. I swear it (sighs) took me all year to actually clean my office. And before I left the school, um, I put away music all the way back from 2019. I filed all of it. Jazz band, concert (sighs) band, percussion, everything. Because when COVID hit, obviously, There was no warning. And the next year we weren't there. And halfway through that year is when my husband got cancer. So I did not enter the building the whole rest of the year. And then the next year he died. And then I had twins. And so all of a sudden I had three years built up of music 
And when I walked out of my office and out of my band room, it felt absolutely amazing. I had a new percussion wall set up and um, all the music was filed. I had kids taking home music, freshmen, um, to file it. And uh, and my office was just perfect. (laughs) Uh, I hope you got pictures. I did. I absolutely did. <laughs> I remember what it looks like. It comes and I, I have to share one other piece of success yeah. is um, with uh, part of the grace that I gave myself. One thing that I really tried to do, even though, you know, there were things outside of my box, is to make connections with the middle schoolers as much as possible and to just go down there and talk with them. And I recruited 100% of the eighth grade class. Wow. Which I have goosebumps. That, that's impressive. It's a big deal. That's a huge Only 14 deal. of them because that's, they started in sixth grade band, right? But wow. those 14 kids signed up for band. Bravo. Yeah. Nice. Well, <laughs> well, you're doing something right. Lots of something's right. Uh, you have <laughs> adorable little ones. I've been watching them grow up on on Facebook as I stalk. They're you pretty. Guys. They're but, pretty uh, cute. They're, they're very ones. musically motivated as well. Yeah, I remember when my kids were little, hanging out with the high school band. How much they you, know, you have the built-in babysitters and and all the fun. Yeah, so it is. I plan on utilizing that. that even more this year. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no nursing while running band camp this year. I'm very excited about that. You know, I used to be proud of myself because I nursed during a while playing trombone during an Easter service at church, but it was only one baby. So now I feel sort of like a slacker (laughs) because I still had one boob totally not doing anything. So, you know, (laughs) all right. Hey, well, well, Leah, thank you so much for for carving out a little time for us and for for sharing your story and your successes. So thank you so much. Think about think about as we go into things next year maybe if we chill the fuck out maybe our personal health or our wellness could be a little better and maybe our programs will be okay maybe they'll thrive (laughs) what if we didn't uh, what what if they'll be okay if if we just did something a little different so to be thinking about that so leah's thank you to you and to all of you folks out there listening to band director boot camp for what a difference you are making in kids lives every single day through the magic of music education the work you do matters and so do you join us next time on band director boot camp for another episode of productivity and wellness tips to make your life a little easier <laughs>